Shaitan Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You guys, welcome to another session of Sunnah Fix. And today, Alhamdulillah, we have another phenomenal young person with us, and I am of course referring to Mahmoud Jabir. Mashallah, Mahmoud has been attending Core Academy since day one. Every course from the get go, Mashallah, and hands down, this is one of the most committed and disciplined people I personally know. Uh, Mahmoud, correct me if I'm wrong. You train five times a week, or is it every every day of the week? Ah, uh, depends on the week. Six, seven. Six, seven times a week. No, that oh days. Sometimes Six, seven three. days a week. Yeah, sometimes two, three times a day. Two, three times a day, and, and that's that. What consumes what two, three hours of your day? Four hours in a, in a day? Oof, with the driving and everything, because like they're all like different sessions and stuff. Like three, four hours a day of training, and then with the driving, it's like another hour and a half, two hours and stuff. Y'all, that's commitment. That's devotion right there. MashaAllah, man. MashaAllah. You know, my teacher, Mufti Kamani, used to say that if someone wants to spiritually progress and you're trying to get closer to God, one thing you want to look for in your life is what he used to call anchors. And anchors are basically consistent habits that you have built weekly, daily, whatever, that whether whether um, it's hell or high water, you're going to stick to them. Whether it's your morning athkar routine or number of pages of Quran you read on a daily basis or maybe you make wudu before you go to sleep or uh, you give weekly charity. Whatever it is that you have kind of come up with, you stick to it no matter what. That's what he calls anchors. And you want to have some of those anchors in your life to give some method to the madness, if you will. So um, I, I, when I think of you, I see Core Academy and Jiu-Jitsu as your anchors, man. MashaAllah, dude. MashaAllah. Allah give you steadfastness. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, Mahmoud, today we're starting, we're actually going to finish Hadith 217. And those of you who are joining for the first time, Hadith 217, we started last week, or, yeah, we did start last week, and we uh, were discussing it in the last session as well. Hadith comes to us from Anas radiallahu where, just to recap, Anas radiallahu says that muhajirun, the Muslim immigrants of Mecca came to the Prophet Sallallahu They're all in Medina now. They're settled now. So now these Muslim immigrants of Mecca came to the Prophet Sallallahu They approached him and they're kind of overwhelmed. Well, why are they overwhelmed? Well, they tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, these Ansar, our hosts, these residents of Medina who are hosting us for months, Ya Rasulullah, they've been so generous, so open-hearted, so selfless that frankly, we're over, overwhelmed and kind of embarrassed <laughs> they're doing so much for us and we're not in a capacity to reciprocate and they hire us they provide for us and at the end of the harvest season they're sharing their produce we we don't we don't know how to match up or live up or respond to this type of generosity this is unbelievable now rasulullah we fear they say in this hadith that they're walking away with all the reward and ajah. what are we supposed to do how you compete with that so the Prophet ﷺ said, no, they're not walking away with all the rewards so long as you make dua for them and show sincere appreciation to them. Now, Mahmoud, last se- session, we talked about making dua for others. So that was, a, that was the entire session. Today, we're talking about showing appreciation and gratitude towards others. So let's talk. That's the topic today. Gratitude, appreciation, man. You guys, Mahmoud and the rest of y'all who are listening, gratitude is one of the gratitude is an emotional state that is extremely beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question, starting with Mahmoud. Mahmoud, if you can't answer, you can cheat off the comments, no problem. Here's the question. Um, Our scholars, they say that there are two guardrails of Iman. You know what guardrails are? You know, on the side of the highways, you see these rails that protect your car from going off the side. Right? Okay, well, they say there are two guardrails of Iman. There are two emotional states, there are guardrails of Iman. Well, one, it's kind of obvious, which is what we're talking about. One is gratitude. So that's the given. That, that's the freebie for you. What's the other emotional state? That's the guardrail of Iman. It keeps you, your Iman from falling off the wayside. Just like highway rails keep your car from falling off the wayside. They keep you on Siratul Mustaqim. Okay, so one is gratitude. What's the other one? What do you think? This is usually paired with shukr. Shukr, and then you see this particular emotion. Yeah, I was about to say, and like, it, thankfulness, but it's pretty much like gratitude, huh? That is, yeah. Thankfulness, gratitude, shukr. That's one. Yeah. Uh, the other is, 
they're like twin twin emotions not fear i see a couple of you guys are seeing saying fear um that's fear is basically with hope that's part of your relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, but these two emotions are particularly about how you process the events in your life uh, it's not a particular act humility is getting close patience sabr that's the one sister nadia thank you very much a shukr and a sabr these are the two guardrails of iman and subhanallah you notice you notice they were kind of always oscillating from one to another why are these the two guardrails of iman if you you know you might be wondering uh, mahmoud and the reason is because when you're when a lot of good things are happening to you mashallah you hey are you a black belt just curious no 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 not yet purple purple yeah, pretty well. Not purple yeah, yet. Yeah, inshallah. We're, we're there, inshallah. Yeah, so let's let's just assume you get your black belt, inshallah, one day, inshallah. You know, that's a pretty big moment. Good things are happening to you. You got your promotion. You got the job that you wanted. When good things are happening to you, what gratitude does, it makes you give credit to Allah. So it keeps you humble, grounded, and from falling into the valley of arrogance. So that's how it kind of protects you as a guardrail. But if a lot of afflictions are happening, a lot of bad things are happening, then sabr keeps you from falling in the valley of despair. It's amazing. They both work together like guardians and keep you centered. So these two emotions are extremely important. And in life, you'll be tested from one to another. You got the job you wanted. That's the test of gratitude. You got a bad health report. Test of sabr. Like one test of gratitude that, alhamdulillah, you know, everybody wants a test of gratitude. I don't know, obviously, if you give people that a choice, they're like, which test would you like? Hands down, in our day and age, everybody would take the test of gratitude. I'd rather be rich and be grateful than poor and have to have patience. You know how they say, right? Even if you have to cry, you'd rather cry in a Mercedes. So that's basically, everybody wants a test of gratitude. <laughs> but Sahaba had, a, Sahaba had a different ideology. They used to say when it came to the test of sabr, we survived because at the time of the Prophet, things were really tough. And then after the Prophet, when Islam started to spread and there's so much, so there's so many, there's, there's so many lands that have accepted Islam and wealth is coming in. They're like, we don't know how we're doing now with all this, all these luxuries that are flowing in. But getting back to my point, we're always tested with one of these two. And one of the tests of, tests of gratitude that I'm kind of going through is that subhanAllah, this time around for our core academies, current course, Dismantling Doubts, you know, like 80 people apply. I believe 80 it. 80 young... I believe it. Oh, it's, it's such a blessing and an honor that 80 young people of their own volition, willing to pay a fee, willing to commit for nine weeks, and they thought that this would be worthy of their time. So I am absolutely like overwhelmed by that. But the, that's the test of gratitude. Now, the test of patience is waking up at every day at 8 a.m. and then researching until 3 and like making analogies and examples and making sure things are presentable. So in life, we're going to be going through one or the other. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us steadfastness. Now, speaking of gratitude, something really, really powerful that I came across in the Quran. So I have had this question in my mind for a while that I was searching for an answer for. And that question was, why is it that some people receive guidance and achieve guidance and others don't? Why is it that some people become Muslims, others don't? Like even in the lifetime of the Prophet Wasallam, his uncle Abu Talib was like super loyal to him, supported him. He's like there with him through thick and thin. But he did not accept Islam, did not say la ilaha illallah, yo. And yet Abu Sufyan, the bitter enemy, ends up embracing Islam and achieving guidance. I used to always think like, what is the criteria, the divine criteria that qualifies someone to receive guidance? Because Allah says in the Quran, la man ahbabta, yahdi man yasha. You don't guide necessarily whom, whom you love. <clears throat> Allah guides whom he wills. Well, so the question is, everything Allah does is laced with wisdom. So there has to be a fair and just criteria for, for who qualifies for guidance. You know, you, you with me? <clears throat> So I'm looking through the Quran, trying to figure out what is this criteria of guidance. And the first criteria that I stumbled upon, subhanAllah, Suratul Al-An'am. Allah is telling us, early on when the Prophet started spreading his message, he went public with Islam. What happened? Some people accepted Islam right away. And these were usually the people at the bottom strata of society. You know, poor people, the Ammars and the Bilals of the world. They accepted Islam first. But the elites and the rich of Quraysh, they were being very stubborn. And every time the Prophet would you know, 
explain the message to them or present the message to them, this was their excuse. This is what the Quran tells us in Surah Al-An'am. This is the sarcastic argument they would make. They would say, These are the losers that God has chosen to guide over us. These are the basket of deplorables, to borrow a phrase, that God chose to privilege with truth over us. And we're the elites with memberships in the country clubs. We're the millionaires with the, in the high income brackets. They're the ones who saw the light and we didn't. <laughs> yeah, right. That was their attitude every time. So Allah responds to this objection of Quraysh. Or they're basically saying that the why, if, if, it's, if your religion is the truth, why would the elites and the rich not follow you and these poor people follow you? You know, how does that make any sense? So Allah responds to this. He says, Allah responds by saying, isn't Allah the one who's most acquainted with those who are truly grateful? Yo, did you just follow what happened there? As if Allah is saying, people of gratitude are prioritized for the reception of guidance. That's a powerful principle. That's a powerful criteria right there. In other words, a heart that is grateful will be drafted for divine guidance. That's a powerful principle. Okay. Now, Mahmoud, I'm, I'm going to ask you and the rest of the people as well. You know, we, we get what Iman means, right? To believe, to be convinced of something. In Arabic, what's the opposite of Iman? Do you know? Or like you have mu'min, but what's the opposite opposite of iman and mu'min? Disbelief, <coughs> kufr. Kufr. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Kufr. And someone who does kufr is called a kafir. Kafir. Okay. Check this out, bro. Kafir, which we usually translate as disbeliever, it doesn't do justice to this. Kafir in classical Arabic was someone. Well, okay. So here's a better translation of kafir. Kafir is someone who deliberately knowingly denies the truth. They have the sense of the truth, but they still reject it for whatever reason. And where do we get this from? Well, classically how ka kafara would be used, kafara would be used to cover something. So like a farmer would be called a kafir, literally. It's used in the Quran in this manner too. A farmer is called a kafir. Why? Because a farmer takes a seed, puts it into the ground, and covers it up. Just like a real kafir takes the truth, buries it into the ground, Covers it up. See the parallel there, right? You know what's another meaning of kafara in Arabic? Ingratitude. Ingratitude. The same word that is used for disbelief is the same word that is used for ingratitude in Arabic. Which, which I, I don't know if, you, if you're following me on this. You know what this means? Someone who actively rejects God. I'm not talking about people who are like casual disbelievers or casual non-believers because a lot of people are just coasting through life. They're not giving serious thought to like existential questions or whatever. But I'm talking about people who are like, who, who are like on a no crusade God. against God and like, yeah, they hate anything religious. Yo, deep down, we're being told somewhere in the dungeons of their consciousness, there is this bitterness, negativity that dwarfs anything good that God has done for them. And that negativity and bitterness and ingratitude basically colors anything that is going their way. And that's why they persist in disbelief. In other words, gratitude is at the heart of your spiritual well-being. Um, any comments that are coming in that you would like to share? Sister Nadia said, arrogance is the quickest way to cut your guidance from Allah. Absolutely, subhanAllah. Absolutely. And both qualities of gratitude and sabr share the foundation of accepting Allah is the one who provides, subhanAllah. Um, Mu'ad, Mu'ad had a comment. People who know the truth and still deny it will suffer the worst of punishment. And that's at the heart of what kufr is. Kufr is not someone who just casually is like not sure. No, no, no. Kufr is like you, you're, you're, in, you're intuitively are convinced, rationally you're convinced, but you're like, no, it's convenient not to. So we have to, may Allah protect us from that. Now, back to gratitude. Gratitude is so beloved to Allah that of the names of Allah is driven, derived from this particular word. And that is the name of Allah, Ash-Shakur. You hear the word shukr in there? Shakur? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, no. Shakara is actually when you're thanking someone. Thank you. 
Like if I said shakar tuka for coming online, mashallah. Okay. Shakar. Now shakur is someone who's thankful. But you know, for in the case of Allah, we don't want to we want to be careful we're not giving a petty translation. So we say Allah the ever appreciative. Allah appreciates you. Or to be more specific, Allah shakur is someone who takes and holds your smallest deeds in the most highest of esteem. So you know that fatigue you felt during Taraweeh, the hunger pangs of fasting, the grogginess of Fajr, the struggle to lower the gaze and not slide into her DM, and the, gruel discip the grueling discipline necessary to turn down the haram job offer, all of that, you can be darn sure that Allah is deeply, extremely appreciative. How do I know this? How do you know I'm not like just capping for, you know, spiritual brownie points and just the clapping from the audience? Ah, hadith, hadith in Muslim tells us, yo, this hadith, when I came across, I was absolutely mind blown. Allah's generosity and appreciativeness is on a level we can't fathom. Check this hadith out. Hadith comes in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet Wasallam says, Prophet Wasallam says, رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا يَتَقَلَّبُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ I saw a man roaming around in Jannah, chilling and chillaxing in Jannah. Why? Because of a tree. So this man lived in a town where there was a tree. So there was a main road that pe people would use for their traveling purposes and going to work and back. And there was a tree on the side of the road that had outgrown so much that it was leaning over the main road. And then it kept growing until it's literally blocking now the middle of the road. So people have a very difficult time passing now. They're trying to weasel out not, without getting scraped and um, without getting cuts. It's blocking the traffic, creating jams. And this person, when he saw what's happening, he took it upon himself without being asked, without being paid, that I am going to remove this tree because it's hurting my Muslim brothers and sisters. Probably took two hours of his day, if not more or less. Took it upon himself. Ask that tree, move to the side. Hadith says, فَأُدْخِلَ jannah." Because of that, Allah granted him Jannah. Two hours. Hey, I, I don't want the audience to assume Jannah is cheap. Because the Prophet has told us, Allah's merchandise is expensive. And Allah's merchandise is Jannah. In another narration in Bukhari, we're told, حُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِ Jannah is paid with the roads of hardship. You got to do a lot of sacrifice and a lot of restraint and disciplining. Yet in this case, because of his heartfelt act and Allah's shakurness and appreciativeness, this person is given Jannah. Amazing, man. How appreciative is Allah, you ask? Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim tells us that when a person does, no, when a person makes an intention to do good, Allah has a good deed written for that person just for the intention, the positivity of that intention and planning. Hasn't done anything yet. Just the intentional, just the intention is there and a good deed kicks in. Then, if that person goes ahead and actually does the good deed he was planning, then you know what happens next, right, Mahmoud? That deed gets multiplied by? By 10, 100. 10, <laughs> all the way up to potentially 700, according to the hadith or beyond. Based on the sincerity of your deed, you'll get a massive multiplier or a boost. Now check this out. If a person makes an intention to do something evil, Allah commands the angel not to write down anything. Oh law. But if that person goes ahead and commits that evil deed that they were planning, now the angel is still told, don't write down anything for six hours. <clears throat> and if the person genuinely like feels guilt and remorse and they actually repent, then nothing is written down, period. But after six hours elapsed, now Allah commands the angel to write down just one bad deed, not 10, not 20. And subhanAllah would like, this is the punchline in my opinion. Then the hadith says, if a person makes an intention of doing something evil, but later changes his mind, and abandons the plan of doing evil, Allah writes him a good deed for that too. SubhanAllah. Imam, Imam Nawawi, who brings this hadith, you know what he said? He's like, Fandur ya akhi. Like, Imam Nawawi is floored, you can tell. He's like, Fandur ya akhi, my brother, look at this. Wa ila ta'ala. 
He's like, my brother, look at this. What an amazing religion Allah has guided us to. <laughs> you know, this is Imam Muslim. He couldn't, control, he couldn't contain himself. He was only listening to hadith. There's no commentary. But here he's like, I, I got to say something. This is, this is too much to hold inside. SubhanAllah. Man. So the, grat gratitude, man, is at the heart of our spiritual well-being. And modern science, I don't know, Mahmoud, if you know, they're heavily studying gratitude right now. And you know what they're discovering? They're discovering that there is no emotional, emotional state that produces as much well-being as gratitude does. Which is crazy, which is crazy. You're, at the, um, as we were discussing earlier, at the heart of you achieving iman, which is your spiritual well-being, gratitude is the key. At the heart of your physical well-being, it's still gratitude. It works both ways. It's crazy, man. SubhanAllah. And uh, some of the things they're discovering is that when a person, uh, when a person is grateful, uh, their energy levels go up, higher emotional intelligence, depression rates are down, more stress forgiving levels. attitude, stress levels, that's right. They feel more socially connected to others, fewer headaches. And they want and better they for others too. Yes, yes, definitely. You're like chill with others because you're grateful. Because a lot of times what happens when you're not grateful for yourself, for instance, you'll have holes in your self-esteem that you will try to get patched by seeking approval from others. And that makes you kind of edgy when you don't get it. But when you're grateful, you have a very healthy self-esteem and you end up appreciating others. And as the study says, these people who are grateful, they also sleep better. So there are a lot of different benefits. Now, here's a really novel idea that I kind of wanted to wrap up my discussion today with. Really powerful idea, because a lot of times when you talk about gratitude and personal development, there's a lot of fluffy, repeating stuff we all hear. So I wanted to share with you something that you may not have heard before. So check this out. There's an entrepreneur named Dan, Dan Solomon, I think his name is. He uh, came up with an idea of what he calls the gap. The gap is, Mahmoud, is basically where you are right now and where you want to be. So right now, for instance, if you are working, let's say, at a gas station. You are not. I'm just, just hypothetically I speaking. I am. <laughs> you are? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let, let's say you're working at a gas station, but your goal is I'm going to open my own gym. So where you are versus where you want to be, that's the gap. And a lot of people, their happiness, they have kind of made up their mind that I will be happy when I basically cross that gap and overcome that gap. When I marry that person of my dream, or when I get that dream job, or I get that um, dream car, like Tesla is in my dream for a bit. Make dua, brother. Inshallah. Same here. Inshallah. Inshallah. For both Wala in Allah says, You're grateful, I will increase you. So a lot of people, they're like, when we overcome that gap, that's when we're going to be happy. So what do they do? They postpone their happiness and they postpone their gratitude until they get there. But what happens in life that it's kind of like chasing these goals of life sometimes can be like chasing the horizon. And when you get closer to your goal, maybe your goals evolve and the yardstick just got pushed, the milestone got pushed a little bit deeper. And you are always chasing your dream, one thing after another. And human beings are not very easily satisfied. So you keep postponing your dreams, kind of like chase, like I was saying, chasing the horizon. You can never get there. And what happens? You indefinitely end up postponing your happiness and gratitude in the process. So he says something very powerful. He's like, instead of looking at this forward gap, why don't you look at the reverse gap? What's the reverse gap? He says, instead of looking forward and where you want to be, look backwards and ask yourself, where were you a year ago versus, versus where are you now? Maybe you ended up graduating. Maybe you ended up passing MCAT within the last year. Maybe you memorized a few pages of Quran that you hadn't memorized before. Maybe you learned or took certain courses that you're really grateful for. Maybe you ended up committing to a contract, job, something that you weren't before. You grew in a certain way. Looking at that, maybe you are on really good terms with your parents now. You're in really good terms with your siblings now. Maybe you're involved in the masjid now. Mashallah, you're involved with the ISM core now. Maybe you had got two courses of core academy under your belt now. Whatever the case is, you look at that reverse gap and reflecting on the reverse gap and how far you've come, that's gratitude. That's gratitude. That's at the sure. heart of gratitude. Instead of looking forward, look backwards. And um, I encourage you guys to do that. Um, and you know, 
And just to kind of wrap this up, the studies found it's not how, you know, a lot of people think gratitude is like when I have some epic event that will happen in my life, I'll, I'll finally pass the MCAT or like I'll get my black belt, you know, some something mega I'm, when I'm going to get married, I get, get that Maldives vacation. That's when I'm going to be grateful. Some epic, crazy, mega event has to happen. Well, according to the studies, it's not how epic the event is. It's how epic your appreciation is. So the event can be small. You know, it could be somebody bringing you a cup of coffee. It could be somebody leaving you a nice note or a nice email. You know, it could be the project you just completed or the loyal friend that you had who gave you a pickup from the airport. You know, like it could be anything. It's how much you appreciate it that determines what your joy levels are going to be. So it doesn't have to be some ma massive event. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of gratitude and gratefulness. I'll end on this. I promise. I know today's session was a little longer. It says I wanted to do justice to this topic. My last story for today. And sorry to keep you in your parking lot for so long. Oh, no. No. Uh, take your time. I the last story for I'm today. I'm liking this. I'm liking I I appreciate, this. I appreciate it. Um, is a hadith that comes in Bukhari. And I know a lot of people a lot of people are commenting. Inshallah, we're going to read off some of these comments. Last story for today. Hadith comes in Bukhari. One of my favorite stories. The Prophet Wasallam says, that before you, in the people before you, there used to be a prostitute. And one day, as she's walking on the road, she sees a dog. Famous story. The dog is licking the sand, looking for water. Thirsty. Maybe on the verge of dying. And this lady, what she does, she sees the desperation of the dog. So she wants to help the dog. So she literally takes her shoe, takes off her khimar, which is basically like the head covering, and turns it into like a string, like a rope. And she lowers it into a well, wow. brings, out, brings up the water, and feeds it to this dog. Because of this act, Deep of Bukhari says, Allah forgave her sins. Mind you, she is a prostitute. Mind you. And because of that one sincere, heartfelt act was so beloved to Allah, the slate is wiped clean. And in one narration, we're told, it was a guy who helped the, helped the dog in a very similar circumstances. And when he did that, the, the wording of the hadith is very powerful. The hadith says, Allah literally translating, thanked that person. Well, obviously, we translate it in a more careful and respectful manner. Allah appreciated that person, but I'm giving you the literal wording so you appreciate how far Allah is willing to go in showing His appreciation to you. So, oh. ask Allah to make us people of gratitude, people of appreciation. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you today. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to work on this, yo. Uh, I'm trying to be more happier and uh, not let my stress overwhelm me. And hopefully, and I feel like this, will, this has helped me. And I hope, inshallah, it helps you guys. Inshallah. Ameen, Ya Rabbi Al Ameen. Yes. It does, it does change, not just like for Muslims, but non Muslims, come on. Like, it, it's, it's how people, like, non Muslims are sometimes grateful for their lives and stuff, and it helps them have better lives and stuff. And Muslims are like always like, because they got into a car crash or they got COVID and they're stuck at home for two weeks or whatever. They, they hate their lives for those two weeks, but it could always be worse, you know, and you can always, mm -hmm. you always be, I don't know. That's how I always look at stuff. Like I always say it, it could be worse, you know. So. Subhanallah, man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to fixate on the positive things in our lives. Because there's no point of living in bitterness and negativity like that. Sister Nadia was saying gratitude is making the most of whatever you have. Gratitude helps you even if you don't verbalize to others. SubhanAllah. Wealth is measured by the contentment of your heart. That's right. That is right. Barakallahu feekum. Mahmoud, I really appreciate your time, you guys. Thanks. Uh, speaking of gratitude, I'm very grateful that you guys have Thanks. committed to this week in and week out. Not only our guests like Mahmoud, but people who tune in despite their busy schedules, being tired, tuning in like that. I really deeply, deeply I am grateful for this. So Nafix is something I'm very grateful for. I have to say it. And um, uh, before I let you go, you guys, if you're looking to start your gratitude regimen, they say there are three levels. Level one is being grateful for something that happened in your personal life. Level two, being grateful for something that happened in your career. Level three, which is the hardest, is being grateful for something about yourself. Very difficult to do. 
But these are the three levels. They're like, it takes 10 minutes, literally, or five minutes. But sitting down and thinking of five things, level one, that happened in your personal life. Level two, five things that occurred in your career. You know, it could even be jujitsu, your recreation. And then finally, level three is something you're grateful about yourself. Maybe you are someone who can read philosophical books like no one else. Maybe you are someone who, when you dedicate yourself to something, you can't give it up. You know, maybe you're someone who, who always remembers people's birthdays. I don't know. Like, there are really good qualities people have that we just don't ever highlight. So these are the three levels. I hope, inshallah, you can start your own gratitude regimen and journey. And inshallah, inshallah. increase our happiness levels. Thank, Thank you, you very Jeff. much, everyone. Good night. And inshallah, I'll see you Monday. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, brother.